Hello friends, this video on motion and measurement of distance part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now, one beautiful thing is that all these units are interconvertible. So you can convert meters into kilometers, you can convert centimeters into decimeters. So you can actually convert any of these into another un other unit. So let us look at the relationship between all these units. So as I said, this is, this is the smallest unit and this is the biggest unit and we consider the reference as meter. So one meter is our reference. Now as you go down, these becomes bigger units. So basically when you talk about decameter, so deca, one decameter is actually equivalent to 10 meters. One hectometer is equivalent to 100 meters. One kilometer is same as thousand meters. Now, similarly, as you go above, that they are like they become smaller than meter. So, one decimeter would become zero point one meter. One centimeter would become zero point zero one meter. One millimeter would become zero point zero zero one meter. So, as you are going up. The value is decreasing as you are going down the value is increasing because the unit is more so if you consider it on a scale like this so let's say if this is one meter just an example it is not really one meter I'm just taking an example so if you assume that this much length is one meter so can you tell me how much would be one millimeter so one millimeter is actually equal to 0 0.001 meter so that means 0 0.001 part of 1 meter. So 1 millimeter would be maybe this much distance. A very small distance would be 1 millimeter. And if I ask you how much would be 1 kilometer, that is going to be 1000 times of 1 meter. So if this is 1 meter, 1000 times such 1 meters would make 1 kilometer. So 1 meter when you multiply this 1000 times, so 1000 such 1 meters would make 1 kilometer. So you, so with this you can get an idea that how these units are related to each other. So now let me again take the same example of uh, need for so many units. So as I was telling that when we want to measure bigger distances, we prefer using bigger units. Do you know why? Now let's talk about the same example of Bangalore to Chennai. So I said the distance between Bangalore and Chennai is 350 kilometers. Now writing 350 kilometer is very convenient and it is very easy to remember also. So it is a very easy way of representing when we are representing in terms of kilometer. So if you try to write the same distance in meters, how would you write? Now one kilometer is equal to thousand meters, right? So 350 kilometers would be equal to 350 into thousand meters. So that would be 350000 meters. Now you tell me which is more convenient. Is it convenient to write 350 kilometer or 350000 meters? Obviously, this is more convenient. If you want, you can also write this in terms of millimeter. So how would you write it? If you write the same thing in terms of millimeter. So millimeter would mean 3500000000. So that's how the number would increase. Number of zeros would increase which will make it all the more inconvenient. So the most convenient way of representing a bigger distance is by using bigger units. Similarly, when we have to represent smaller distances, we would use the smaller units like millimeters and centimeters. Right? Now, a lot of times you might need to convert uh, from one unit to another. So how do you convert from one unit to another? So always remember that whenever you have So one simple thing, if you remember, that would help you to uh, convert a measurement from one unit to another and that is whenever you have to convert from a unit from the bottom towards the top 
So if you want to say convert kilometers to decameter or kilometer to meter or decameter to decimeter, so everywhere you are actually going from bottom to up. So from a unit which is at the bottom to a unit which is at the top. So whenever you are doing that, you are going to multiply. Multiply with what? Multiply with multiples of 10. Let me explain you. Let's say you have to convert kilometer to hectometer. So what you do, you will multiply with 10. If you have to do it for kilometer to decameter, so you multiply by 100. When you have to do it for kilometer to decimeter, so how many steps? 1, 2, 3, 4. So basically you should have 4 zeros. So you multiply with 10,000. If you want to convert kilometer to centimeter, so one more zero. So whenever you are converting from one unit which is at the bottom to another unit which is at the top, you always multiply by multiples of 10. And how many zeros would be there depends upon the number of steps between those two units. And exactly the same concept when you are converting from one unit which is at the top to one unit which is at the bottom. So let's say when you are coming from top to bottom, all you need to do is you divide by one multiples of 10. For example, you have to convert centimeter to decimeter. So you are coming from top to down and it is just one step so you divide by 10 you want to convert centimeter to decameter so here you are coming from top to bottom so you have to divide and how many steps one two three so you have to divide by thousand you have to convert from centimeters to hectometers again you are coming from top to down and how many steps one two three four so you have to divide by one followed by four zeros that is one followed by that is 10,000. You have to divide by 10,000. So this is how you have to convert from one unit to another. So always remember when you are going from down to up, you have to multiply and when you are coming from top to bottom, you have to divide. So that's how it is. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.